I mean, this is a great lady, a great, great lady. Because again, when I met her over 15 years ago, and she gets more beautiful every year, every time I see her, she's a beautiful woman. She grows food on the mountain. You know, the tallest mountain in, in Ghana uh, is in the Volta region. And when I go to the Volta region, it's like sometimes going to, I used to live in New Jersey where it was cold. I grew up in the south of America, not far from Atlanta. But then they, the military shipped me into to the cold northeast and it was cold as a witch's heart. <laughs> when I would go to the Volta region, it was cold up there on the mountain. <coughs> Sister Peace Badu, honorable, okay, because she served in, she, she won a few, uh, Elections for Mother's Day, she'll explain that to you. She's uh, the, the CEO of the organic farm that deals in brown rice, okay, on the mountains. Mm -hmm. And she, support, she promotes women farmers and she has spearheaded rice production a thousand fold in Ghana. Whereas it used to be hard to find this on the market in Ghana, now you can find it easily. Let us bring forward ours. Wonderful sister, honorable peace, brother. My sisters and brothers. And I'm happy, I've been seeing you on the house, but I haven't seen you face to face before. The organic uh, family. Um, my name is uh, Peace Bab. Uh, in bracket, honorable. I'm an ex uh, assembly woman, but I'm still doing the work. Um, I'm a professional artist, actually. Multimedia, of course, because I, I, I major in sculpture and painting, but I do ceramics, textiles, and anything else. And uh, it was one of these that took me to the US for an exhibition in Georgia, Atlanta. And uh, I was honored to go there for the first time. Since then, every year I've been going there for the past 20 years. Because my brother's wife also lives there. She's a judge over there. And um, I also work at the hospital as a senior health administrator. Um, that is why maybe I like to grow healthy food. And currently, I've become a farmer because I want to empower the women who are farmers. I love gardening, especially flowers. So everywhere I stayed before, you see that the whole place is green, green. And my house in Isawa is all green. Whether there are snakes or not, I don't see the snakes, actually. <laughs> I'm not there for the snakes. I just go, I just go into the bush. Well, my first time in US, we went to the farmer's market and my brother's wife saw this rice and then told me, please, this is your food. And I said, which food? The brown rice? And then she said, yes. So we asked where it was coming from. And they said it was coming from India and Bhutan. And then I said, wow, this is my food in Ghana. Actually, this is our ancestral food mm. in the mountains. And this rice, we grow it on the mountains. So we call it um, Apple rice or orizai glaberuma or orizai sativa. You have different species actually. So I brought the one kilo pack and I, I met only four women growing it. This is what we use during our festivals, our marriage rites, uh, when uh, women bring forth, which is our antibiotic. But then there's a whole lot of work in it. So many people stop doing it because. They, they, they actually uh, start to love American rice, India, uh, uh, China rice, Vietnam rice, and nobody wants to grow local rice. So at that time, the minister who was uh, the great uh, minister, the late uh, Major Koshika, was talking about making Ghana rice. That was 20 years ago, the year 2000. And I went and showed the rice to, her, uh, to him. And he had never seen even the brown rice before in his life. So I decided to go and gather the women 
Now I have about 150 farmers have growers. They could not do up to an acre, but I started with five acres. And now I have five, uh, 50 acres and they have about 10 acres because they can't, you know, fund it. But uh, sometimes I try to help them from my salary. So we are growing, 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 growing. Now you can see a lot of brown rice on the streets and I'm happy because of me, you can see brown rice in Ghana. Right. And uh, now what I do with uh, the perfume rice is I, I, I mill it on polish. I have a sample over here because that's the taste that people know. But health-wise, we have to eat it on polish. We don't have to eat it polished because all that we're eating is just maybe starch or carbohydrate. The doctors will tell us. So it's good to eat it on polish, just like we eat this rice on polish. Some people polish it, and I tell them no, it's not good that way because they say oh, it doesn't cook fast. But it will cook fast. When you add more water, it will cook. And uh, they said it doesn't taste good. I said, well, no medicine tastes good. But then you have to live on it. Don't wait till the doctor says go and eat brown rice before you have to eat it. You have to start teaching our children how to eat it because in my area, that's what children know. We have a, a porridge or um, pudding. And there's a lot of cashew in the rice. So because we come from a rocky area, people grow even up to 100 years. You still see them. They don't suffer from osteoporosis. Nobody breaks any bone in over there. I've never seen anybody who has fallen down and has POP on the leg or arm before. And people grow very old, but they don't grow fat, actually. That's what Ghanaians like. People want to grow fat. So they say, oh, this rice doesn't grow people fat. But it's good. I don't fall sick because I do, you know, I eat this rice and I've introduced my children to it. And so I try to go to the hospitals, talk to the dietitians that they must introduce it to the um, babies, you know. Mothers must actually eat this rice. And so we have the infant formula from six months, you can have the powder. And that same powder we use in making cakes, pastries, food, uh, noodles, whatever I want to do with it. And then we have the roasted rice flour also, which is also uh, one of our traditional dishes. But then that is good for the diabetes because we've roasted all the stuff, you know, in it. So it's good, you can use it for uh, something we call like apple, the one you use the palm oil with. And then you can uh, equally use it for uh, pudding, cocoa. And then we have, uh, the spiced flour, spices are to added to the rice as we mill it, and it's so tasty. I have all on the table. Now, because I come from the uh, mountain area, that is the highest habitation in West Africa, if not Africa. We have a lot of fruits. So what we do with the salsa, I try to choose some, I brought some few bottles here. And then uh, we have coconuts also. And then I try to do something with it, you know, as a mixed snack together with a uh, uh, mix with ginger. And we have uh, um, sick people who always talk about, you know, I'm sick, I've been to the hospital, and the, the doctor didn't say anything wrong with me. It is what goes into our bodies that makes us sick, you know. So we have to look at our food again. So I developed my, um, my interest in growing organic food and I've told the Greek ministry, don't introduce any herbs, uh, herbicide or any uh, fertilizer into my area. And that's what they know about me. Because when you start teaching the farmers to use this, we can't see even the crabs anymore, we can't see the mushrooms, we can't see the snails, we can't see anything. Those who tried it before, they spray the ground because we use our hand in hoeing and we use cutlasses. You see that the birds will come and pick the rice and then you go back to the hoe again because we don't have machinery. We actually need power tillers that can go around on the hills and then the trees comes. But we don't have them. So from growing to harvesting to threshing, to carrying it home, to processing, 
we do everything manually. That is when I think I'm going to need all of you to come and help. Because these are women who are actually doing well. Some of them have put up their own houses. They are able to look after their children. The men sit under the mango trees and then sit from uh, one because it's many seasons that we grow the rice. They don't like to go through the rain. And after the three months that we have it in rice, what we do is we have to do other things. So I tried to introduce uh, moringa, and then uh, Irish potatoes grows well over there, and tea grows well over there. We can do all sorts of things when we are empowered. So I'm inviting all of you to come visit next time you come. If you are not going so soon, let's go up there. There's no mosquitoes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when I was in the assembly, I pressed forward and then they, they tied the roads for us. So it's the first class road from Go, which is the original capital, it's just 20 minutes. And you can go up there, there are hotels, nice hotels over there. You can rest, the place. you don't need fans, you don't need uh, air conditions, you know. Everything is cool over there, the people are friendly. Everybody there understands English because they were trained by the Germans, so they know how to actually receive this place. So you are welcome over there. If there's any question, anybody can ask me. But every year I visit US, but not in winter. Because I don't like, I come from a cold area, but I don't like cold dressing in so many clothing to go out. No, I don't like that. And I want to feel free. So you are welcome once again. Okay, great. Let's give our sister and repeat the number one call. Great entrepreneur. Great entrepreneur. You see, in Africa, we have a lot of entrepreneurs here, but we just have to what? Support each other internationally. I grew up in America. We were taught to get a job, to work for other people. But the people that we were working for had their own what? Company. And we have to train ourselves. Fortunately, I was blessed to have a father that had his own business. And it helps when you have family to support you. So we're thankful. I'm really blessed also uh, to have that experience that I learned there to share here. And I want to connect. Uh, I want to call up a couple of people briefly. Uh, the sister that makes